What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Austin, and I'm going to be showing you how to do uh, a time lapse today. And I'm going to be showing you a little bit on how to color correct as well, and uh, a little bit of color theory. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, quite a few things today. So let me show you what we're going to be doing in After Effects CS5. It's not this shot, but it's a quick one. This one right here. I'll show you how to just put together a time lapse. Um, if you've already shot one on your camera, uh, you should have uh, quite a few pictures. Uh, so let me get started. We're going to open up After Effects. I'm going to open up uh, a new comp. Um, when I shoot uh, for pictures, when I have it on a time lapse mode, uh, however you like to do it, um, I have it take uh, a picture every one second. Um, and I take it in the smallest, um, I guess the smallest format the camera can capture it, uh, which is just above 1080. So I will do 1080p at 24 frames. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter whatever frame rate, frame rate you would like. So let's go. Uh, so what I'm going to do, um, after you have your pictures from your camera, um, what you're going to want to do with them, um, highlight all of them. I have all mine organized here in folders. Uh, highlight all of them and get all the ones that uh, match up. Put them all in a folder by themselves. And this is going to be very helpful for putting them together in a time lapse. Uh, it's pretty easy. So what we're going to do is uh, time lapse 14 here, this folder. All we're going to do is drag this whole folder into After Effects and drag that onto our comp. And as you can see, it's a little big. Um, just scale it down. However you like to do that, you can press S, uh, scale to whatever you're comfortable with. Um, so as you can see, it gives us one, one clip here. Um, most tutorials, uh, they'll say uh, you can run like a script file after you've put all the, all the pictures <coughs> actually in the comp. Um, so, but then you'll have like two or three or 400 or 500 um, individual layers. And I don't like to do it that way. All you got to do is drag it here and it already lines it up for you. So it's very easy. Let's get started here. Uh, what I'm going to do, I have a little shake right there. So I'm just going to trim uh, with the Alt bracket key and then drag the playhead all the way to the beginning and then press the bracket key to uh, pull the footage to the left. Okay, so now we have this um, in the clip that I had showed you on the video. Um, it was not 16 seconds long. It was only about three or four seconds. So what we can do to shorten this, I'm going to go to uh, right click on here and go to time, time stretch. And I believe, let's do something around 30, 30%. And that gives us about a five second clip. So now you can watch this back and... I recorded all this within about uh, probably about an hour or 45 minutes. So it was about 45 minutes condensed down into five seconds. So on to color correction. Um, I normally use a plugin called Color Finesse. Um, I know a lot of people don't have that, so I'm just going to duplicate the look using Curves. Uh, curves is probably one of the most important color correction tools that I've ever used. Um, so let's get started and put it in full resolution here. Okay. So now try and match, uh, oh, where's my video? I lost it. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to try and match what I had in the video just by winging it here. So basically, um, when I shoot, I shoot in what's called a cine style. If anyone shoots with, uh, any, uh, I guess Canon, uh, the EOS, EOS, whatever, uh, cameras 5D, 7D, T2I, T3I, 60D. Uh, you can put a cine style on your camera. It shoots super flat, and that's what you're seeing here. So the first thing I'll do uh, is do an S curve on curves, and that'll just bring up more contrast. Um, but shooting the cine style, I do get 
a lot more detail. Um, it's probably hard to tell, but it's definitely noticeable if you compare side by side. I get a lot of detail in the shadows as well as the highlights. It doesn't blow either of them out, so I have a lot more room to play. So, I have an S curve for contrast. We can adjust that later. <coughs> um, another thing I like to do, um, instead of just adding contrast to everything, um, is actually clipping the blacks a little bit. Uh, a lot of people don't like doing that um, because it can kill your footage, but if you shoot for it, uh, it looks a lot better. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but the blacks aren't quite black. They're uh, just a hair above black part, like a half black, half gray. I don't know. Whatever you whatever you uh, want to call it. Uh, so we have that. It's pretty easy. I'm going to go to the red channel. <coughs> and then if you look, uh, this is a time lapse of the sunset uh, as it's kind of coming down over the building over here. Um, there's a lot of reds and whatever in the sky there's a lot more uh, color and saturation than anywhere else so we want to make those come out um, I'm gonna put a point in the middle of the red uh, the red curve channel uh, just so that doesn't move and I'm just gonna bring it up and now when you bring the red I guess the highlights up on the right side of the curve <coughs> it automatically brings um, the left side down the left side of the curve down and uh, I find this uh, very uh, interesting, I guess, um, and also kind of helpful. Um, if you know anything about color theory, um, whenever you map certain colors, uh, if you ever, if you know what a thing called split toning is, when you map uh, like red to the high, or I guess we'll take an example, like blue to the or uh, like a tan or a yellow to the highlights, it'll automatically map uh, blue to the shadows. And in this case, it's red and green. They're kind of, uh, I guess, corresponding colors on the color wheel. Uh, so I think that looks really good. Uh, you can play around with here. Um, what I normally do is just put S, S curves in red, then in green, then do the opposite S curve in blue. So sometimes that looks good, sometimes it doesn't. I think I'm just going to keep just the red channel. <coughs> so... Um, if you've been doing any color correction, uh, you get done, and uh, I guess you go, oh, that looks okay, I guess, and uh, let me just turn it off so you can see the difference. So there you go. Super simple, looks a lot better. Um, any adjustments you need to make, just come back to the RGB channel, and uh, I will say, if you do bring down, um, I guess the the shadows and the highlights it will affect your red channel because you've mapped them differently. I guess play just play around with it a little bit. You'll get it if you're new new to curves. Uh, I've been working with it for a while, so but it's definitely a very cool cool tool. I guess that looks fine there. Let me. I probably like that. That's probably pretty close to the original video. Um. So let me play this back here. Render in. Let me render in half. Go a little faster. Like I said, this was um, over the course of about 45 minutes. Something like that. 45 minutes or an hour. So if you notice, as it gets darker, um, because I have clipped the blacks just a little bit, I might actually bring it down just a little bit, actually. You clip it just a little bit. When it gets darker, you'll start to see more, uh, more of the shadows come in, and more I guess, pixels in the image become clipped as it gets darker. I'm stalling. Let me just render this. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so as you can see. It's a lot different than what we had in the beginning. As you can see, like I said before, this is super flat, and it's really good to shoot in this. I think I was only shooting ISO, like I use a TTY. I was only shooting ISO 400, I think. And it was fairly dark. Uh, when you shoot super flat, it tends to give you, um, I guess, uh, it almost seems like the camera, I guess more light comes into it. 
Okay, so there you have it. Pretty easy, uh, simple tutorial. Uh, any questions, let me know. I guess it's kind of a beginner tutorial. I'm kind of new to this as well. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Kutcher's Beast. That's my personal. Anonymous underscore films. That is, uh, I guess, the channel you're on now. That is uh, that Twitter. So uh, be sure to check those out. And thank you for watching. I'll have a link at the end of the video for uh, uh, the main video that uh, we did the tutorial on today. So thank you. Second drop right now.